hoping to find some uh, new folks coming out tonight. But uh, so glad you're here. Um, since our program director is open tonight, I'll introduce her. <laughs> and uh, I remember reading through the Lincoln Herald, the old ones, as I was indexing all that. And in the last of December of every year, uh, or the very first issue of the following year, was always a review of the year before. And it was always so interesting. So I beat through it, I said, I didn't see that story. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't see that story, and I have to go back and take a look. So uh, it'll be an interesting uh, evening tonight. Uh, Diane? Did I get the description halfway right? Yes. Oh, okay. Did. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this presentation is one uh, that we hope to put in our files and keep. And have a file that's marked chronology and actually have some dates put with some things. If people call in and ask about them, it will help us find them or give us a little bit of information on them. So that's one of the reasons why I chose to do this program. One of the drawbacks of doing this program is that I didn't decide to do it until October. So needless to say, part of my clippings, because I do do a lot of clipping and leave them here so that we have current things in our files for the future, were already turned in and filed in various places. And of course, I don't make a list of those. So I did not look for them. <laughs> I used my memory and tried to put this together. And I came up with quite a few things because it kept me quite busy working on it. But I'm sure there are important things that I did not list and we'll catch up with them later. I'm going to start with January. Some of these things will not be an exact date order because I didn't have or find a date for them but I knew that they occurred, so I just kind of added them in approximately where I think they belong. Um, first thing in January, I'm going to mention that I3 Broadband is continuing its installation of 100% fiber optic, high-speed internet, TV, and voice service throughout Lincoln, and the business plans to open a local retail office. On January 10th, Lincoln's Big R store officially became Lincoln Farm and Home with its grand opening. Well, and this is on the 22nd. Well, white plastic wrap is going up around the dome of the Wilkin County Courthouse to protect it from the elements. The courthouse restoration project work continues. From time to time, county offices have been moved to the Orr Building or the Assessor's Veterans Office buildings to accommodate construction work. On the 27th of January, the Illinois Route 66 Scenic Byway awarded Logan County Tourism $1,000 for the future construction of a pavilion on the large lot behind the mill on Route 66 Museum. February saw the second largest amount of snow accumulation ever, including 8.3 inches falling on the 2nd and 6.8 inches falling on the 17th. Habitat on the 11th, Habitat for Humanity blessed its 26th home. I just can't believe that today. And that was at 1017 Tremont Street. Occupants, Rye Long and her family. In March, the Elkhart Station General Store was opened by Con Hospitality. And on the 7th, the Lincoln IGA store reopened following an arson fire in June of 2021. On the 28th of March, E.G. Keith, age 11, published her first novel, Hava. An open house and book signing was held at the Lincoln Women's Club building. And on May 13, Lincoln College notified the Illinois Department of Higher Education and Higher Learning Commission of its permanent closing as of that date. The college had been in operation in Lincoln for 157 years the COVID-19 pandemic and a several month software glitch contributed to a decline in student enrollment which led to the closure. On the 7th, fire destroyed Unity Point Health outpatient use facility 
Unity Place at 125 North Sangamon Street. On the 10th, the Palms Grill Cafe on Historic Route 66 reopened. However, it became Missy's Sweet Shop. Missy Gaither is leading the, lo is leading the location, excuse me, leasing the location from the Atlanta Public Library. On the 11th, Ty Checker and Levi Curry conducted their first auction, CG Auctions, new renovated location at 1112 Keokuk Street. In June on the 19th and 20th, a Juneteenth Parade and Festival is held at the county fairgrounds commemorating the weekend. It is estimated more than 500 persons attended the fairground event. In July, the Mulligan Solar Project began operating and delivering clean energy to the electric grid to power approximately 14,000 U.S. homes this month. Mulligan Solar employed over 300 workers during peak construction and will provide over 30 years of annual revenue for the Logan County schools and other taxing bodies, totaling seven million in local tax revenue. Mulligan Solar also donated $70,000 to the Gilfrey Habitat Conservation Project, located about eight miles west of the facility. They also donated funds to the Lincoln Rural Fire Department to purchase a brush fire unit, which can be placed on the back of an ATV. In August, an EF1 tornado touched down on the far west side of Beeson. According to the National Weather Service on Lincoln, there was damage to the grain elevator, a large grain bin, and equipment, and a few homes had roof damage as the storm followed a 1.7 mile track. <laughs> the city of Atlanta on the 27th of August unveiled a new commemorative sign, being the first African Americans in Atlanta. They, this is in Route 66 Park. The new sign was placed just off the concrete pathway leading from the park entrance to the Atlanta Fair ticket booth around the items from Atlanta's past. The new sign focuses on four significant African-American firsts in Atlanta. The first high school graduate, Civil War, Civil War veterans, publicized Emancipation Proclamation celebration, and church. The importance of Atlanta High School and the Atlanta Fairgrounds are featured, along with a quote from an 1863 letter written by James Ewing of the Hawes family, which captures the sentiments of many Atlantans shared before and during the war. Route 66 Park is the brick wall park on the corner of Race and Arch Streets, where the hot dog guy is. <laughs> and the Illinois Route 66 Scenic Byways grant made the signage possible. Now, during the Logan County Fair, the concert was 638 special. And the queen was Emma Stolzenberg, Isabella Policy was the junior miss, and Lucy Bobel was the little miss. And on the 26th and 27th of August, balloons over 66, there were 36 balloons here this year. In September was the 51st Annual Rail Splitting Festival at Postville Courthouse and Park. The Rail Splitting Contest winners were John Noor, Nori, Bryce Muir, that was first place. Second place was Zach Dornell and Curtis Proch, I can't pronounce these, P-R-O-C-H. And third was Thomas Madigan and Lawrence Gabelby. On the 18th of September, the Logan County Genealogical and Historical Society resumed regular hours for the first time since smoke damage was sustained from a fire in an adjacent building a year ago. On the 29th, the City of Lincoln offered tours of the newly refurbished water testing laboratory building at the City of Lincoln Waste Treatment Plant. The laboratory building is the original structure built in 1936. The refurbishing included reassigning spaces, installation of new fixtures, and updating the water testing lab. Improved climate control involved the installation of new central heating and cooling. On the 31st, John Martinet and partners Nathan Hoffs and Vic Martinet 
snip the ribbon on their new business, the Travel Tap, a beverage delivery service which includes a refrigerated trailer with six beverage taps. In November, the Lincoln Women's Club building became handicap accessible with the addition of a ramp. On the 15th, the Logan County Board approved the Top Hat Wind Farm located near Mount Pulaski and Latham in the southeast portion of the county. The project includes 60 turbines, each with 384 foot towers. The Top Hat Project has signed an agreement to slow the turbines in the event of threatening weather. On the 18th of November, the Logan County Board and Lincoln Partners took over the ice skating rink in Scully Park at 4 o'clock. Tickets for skating were available at the Park District website. Guests may bring their own skates or rent them at the park. And the rink can be converted to pickleball court. The ice rink is scheduled to close January 15. So on the 22nd of November, the Logan County Board approved a conditional use permit for the Pike Creek Wind Farm Project, which is located near Elkhart. The approval came with 52 conditions. And the board did not vote on a proposal to change the zoning orders to permit applications for carbon sequestration. And an underground battery storage proposal is also being eyed by the board. And then comes December. It has a lot of things happening. As you can tell, I, I actually have clippings from October, November, and December. So <laughs> I, I was well geared for those months. December 1, the Central Illinois Veterans Commission has completed three tiny homes at 6th and College Streets. A fourth home is planned for 908 Decatur Street. On the third, Spud Newhouse and Marsha Fernandes were grand marshals for the Lincoln Christmas Parade. On the 12th, Elkhart Hill Vineyard released its new Kid Novu wine today. This is the first wine to be produced from the Elkhart Hill Vineyard. Marquette grapes for this wine were picked by the Cotton family and friends on August 25th. The wine is available for purchase only at the Elkhart Station General Store. Jude, H3, grandson of Court and Karen Kahn, helped plant the vines and is featured on the bottle label of the smooth and sumptuous semi-dry red with hints of black cherry, dark berry, and a bit of chocolate on the nose. The Lincoln High School Wrestling Tournament has been named to honor Floyd D, who has been involved with it for as long as 50 years ago, and that's the Holiday Wrestling Tournament. The Star Buffet opened at the location of the former McDonald's, 1109 Haycox Drive. And I'm not sure, is it still there? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's busy. Okay, wanted to know, I wasn't sure. Uh, on the 25th, now I just put this on the 25th because I didn't have a date for them because they just started putting up the Christmas trees and decorating them around the courthouse as they put them up. A record number of Christmas trees decorated by area civic groups, businesses, and individuals beautified the courthouse square. The Humane Society of Logan County on the 26th has announced it's planning for a new addition to its shelter on North Lincoln Parkway Drive. On the 29th, Keystone Power Holdings is developing a solar project on the city of Lincoln-owned property across South Lake Road from the city water treatment plant. President Joe Biden has announced his intent to appoint Bill Thomas of Atlanta to the Route 66 Centennial Commission. And towards the end of the year, Joseph Meister was named the new Lincoln Chief of Police and then not installed until this year. And during the year, two new title companies began doing business in Logan County. Prairie Land Title Company purchased the Logan County Title Company location on Pulaski Street, and the Title Center is doing business in its office at the Logan County Farm Bureau building. And during the year, the Pink Shutter announced plans to move to its new location on Broadway Street. And on the 31st, I've got quite a list, but Today is the final day for delivery of babies at Lincoln Memorial Hospital. The family maternity suites are being converted into patient rooms. Re renovation work continued this year at Holy Family Catholic Church. Accomplishments included altered furniture made by local craftsmen, 
painting and installation of a new floor. Most of the work was done at the front of the church. According to information received by Beth Cavillan, Logan County is in ranked first among Illinois counties for renewables. Oh, to go back to Holy Family, I missed a line. Plans for 23, 2023 at the church include additional painting, floor work, and obtaining new pews. The Lincoln Courier ended the year without a local managing editor and without the weekly column of Dan Tackett. In both instances, no swan songs were offered. The courthouse dome's exterior copper work is about 80% complete. Bill Walter, project manager, said he expects the dome to be finished and the scaffolding to be removed in July. The 38 geothermic wells, each quarter feet deep and loops, are finished. Connecting pumps, pipes, excuse me, running ductwork and piping is being installed for a system of high efficiency heat pumps. Brad Swim, project manager, to coordinate the new climate and electrical systems, reported asbestos abatement has been completed and one of the old boilers removed. Preparations are being made for the new electrical transformer and panels. And the air closed out, but I'm not finished yet, with vandals causing major damage to the covered wagon tourist attraction located near the Best Western Hotel. It was indicated the damage would cost thousands of dollars to repair. The damage included complete destruction of the wagon's back gate and some of the items inside the wagon. The back wheel, rim, and sidewall of the wagon were pushed out of place with the wheel being badly damaged. The plans call for the wagon to be restored. Snowfall for the year totaled 28.5 inches. The normal amount for our year is 19 inches. Also in 22, Tom Schmidtle's Dovetail Inn opened in Emden. First Presbyterian Church, 301 Pekin Street, improved accessibility with the installation of decorative stone and concrete ramp, which enters the sanctuary. Growing Oak Concrete Products, 601 South Kickapoo Street, is constructing a new plant on Connolly Road. The top of the 19th restaurant at the Elks is closed. Hmm. And Tremont Bank constructed and opened a banking facility on Woodlawn Road. Also, Tom's Lodge became the Lodge off Route 66 near Hartsburg. The new owners of the Lincoln Daily News are Karen Hargis and Ida Smith. And the business has moved to downtown Lincoln. And that is what I found. In the room, no. Oh, yeah, I knew that. I forgot to put that in. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody? That was disrupting. <laughs> yes, you're right. Um, Okay. Has anybody eaten at that Dovetail Inn in Emden? I heard, I heard he did. I, I heard good opinion? reports. I yeah. heard it's busy. Yeah. Yeah. Like did you? You go with the Dovetail? We've yeah. heard a lot of people say they really enjoyed it. We have not yeah, they said it was good. Yeah. And and when are they open? Only for like supper? No. Lunch. Basically, all day. Yeah, yeah. Google them. Yeah. Google them. Yeah. They have hours. Posted pretty much, pretty right. New Holland is open now too. They got New Holland. Oh, okay. It's real. Yeah, it's real. All right. They got good food. Okay. Okay. On the top of the 19th, when did it close again? Just recently. Yeah, I don't know. Sometime towards the end of the year. A week ago was their last time. A week ago Sunday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was. It was on the 19th. What is this? The old McDonald's? Oh, at the Star Buffet. Yeah. It became hibachi. Sushi. Yeah, sushi. sushi. <coughs> yeah, it's, I it's good. haven't been there, so. I don't know. That's why I did ask if it was still open, because I really sushi. didn't know for sure. Okay, well, thank you. And well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, I took that out of the picture. <laughs> I came in and set up this afternoon and I was home already. I said, nobody's probably getting the cake. Hi. <laughs> um, you did the business meeting. It was 
start with the pledge. Thank you. 